This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And aloha. Welcome to another edition of uh, Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And um, for those of you who may not have seen the program before, which I think everybody around the world is viewing, um, we talk about military and veterans issues. Uh, today, my special guest is uh, Dennis E.J. He's an activist. Uh, he does a lot of things uh, in the veterans community, travels around the country talking to different groups about what's happening out there. And again, what we try to do here is uh, bring the information that's going to be beneficial or, you know, to enlighten you to what's going on. And a lot of the subjects we talk about, of course, deal with the uh, military and veterans. But, um, you know, we want to show you how uh, the military and the veterans interact with the local communities and, um, you know, try to get as much support for those individuals who are out there serving us anyhow. Dennis, thanks for coming on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, Calvin. It's always good fun when we get on the air. Yeah, good. So what's been happening lately? I know that you've been, uh, when's the last time you've been back to the mainland? There's some major issues that's been coming up, I, um, I understand. I uh, want to read something real quick anyhow before we get into well, it. Well, yeah, it was last October, no. and uh, this was to attend a, a retiree, military retiree seminar in Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. And then I'm planning to go again the end of March. Yeah this year, and this time it'll be to Washington, D.C. to mm -hmm. wish Mary a, a happy new year to our, our members of Congress. Yeah. Okay. Okay, one thing I want to get out of the way, because since we had been, um, did a couple programs about the Branch 46, the Fleet Reserve Association, we had the national president that came on and also some of the local uh, officers, anyhow, uh, just to give the viewers an update on what's happening, I know that there is a lot of things that's still going on. They're still trying. There's an effort to put to still try to save the organization. Um, I know there's a meeting on the 19th of January, as of this taping, uh, for those who want to get involved. You know, but uh, of course, with um, you know some things that need to be worked out and clarified. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want to you know publicly acknowledge that, and then for the sake of. Uh, you know, uh, clarity or honesty or whatever it is. You know, we're I'm a branch me uh, lounge member, as they say, and I think you're a full member. Or? Full member, yeah, life full member, member, actually, yeah. of the branch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure, like, say that uh, when we put anything out here, like, say, you know, our affiliation. You know, so I'm not personally not involved with any either administrative or anything like that. But uh, as I mentioned, just a concerned veteran who is a member of the organization. But uh, hopefully, they'll get it together, and like, saying we'll find out what's going on because. Not only with, uh, with that organization, there's a, I, I was surprised to find out that uh, there's like 180 different entities over here that claim, you know, affiliation or some kind of uh, workings with the, um, you know, with the veteran community. Mm -hmm. You were aware of that, right? All right? I wasn't aware there's that many. Yeah. There's, there's probably too many, but that's my opinion. Yeah, that's a question that, you know, that's coming up where, Divide, you know, I call it divide and conquer. Yeah. We need to be more and more solidified as far as some of the efforts, anyhow, because roughly we have like about 180, yeah, 120,000 mm -hmm. vets, give or take, you know, throughout the islands, anyhow, you know, and uh, with the amount of involvement, you know, individual um, community activities, you know, that the veterans are involved in, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of it uh, doesn't have to deal with organizations, you know, but uh, the attitude that a lot of veterans have is, um, you know, the spirit of giving. We talk about that a lot, right. anyhow, you know, so. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll see how things, you know, transpire in the future or what happens uh, with this organization, with that organization, and um, some, you know, see if there's going to be a change in attitude within the veterans community, especially with the, um, a lot of these different organizations, you know, because unfortunately what happened, we have people that um, have been in positions far too long, you know, and uh, what happens with the new people that come in, it seems like they're kind of turned off with some of the internal politics sometimes that goes on, you know, mm -hmm. and not saying that all these organizations are like that. Uh, of course, there's some stellar groups that you can, you know, point out, you know, the Oahu Veterans Council or um, the operation down there. One thing is totally transparent, you know, with what they're doing anyhow, so we'll see. Um, anyhow, what's what, what do you hear this on the horizon that's affecting veterans right now? Well, I still think that the, uh, the Veterans Administration is going to be under the gun this year. No. Uh, they, uh, the non-mainstream media keeps on leaking horrible things mm -hmm. uh, in, into the social media. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and people listen to this. Uh, I do too. Mm -hmm. And I believe that... <clears throat> Eventually, 
quietly or with some drama, mm -hmm. uh, the VA will eventually ditch the VHA. And they're, right now they're very quietly outsourcing more and more and, um, providers. Mm -hmm. uh, my hearing aids, they're maintained by a contractor. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. In Fort Bliss area in Texas, uh, the congressman sponsored this that, uh, for that area. He sponsored that type of, uh, of and the VA agreed they would give it a try. I mean, Fort Bliss is pretty big, mm -hmm. and there's a lots, of, lots of retired uh, retired and military and veterans who reside in the area. Yep. And it seems to be going so smoothly, we don't even hear about it on yep. the air anymore. Yeah, we hear about all these different stories that go on within the VA, and there's supposed to be changes that came about. I understand that there were people in, in high places and around the country that were removed, and, um, you know, then some of them are being put back and reinstated, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people are curious about what's going on with that, you know, but again, that's on a large level. Here locally, um, what do you, I mean, uh, there's systemic problems anyhow. But as far as with your personal knowledge, what, you know, the feedback that you're getting from veterans, are they happy with the VA system over here or there's been some improvements or there's, of course, there's always room for improvement. But what is the sense that you get about what's happening with the, um, you know, the VA here? Well, I think the veterans are, there are some who are happy and then there's a, uh, more who are afraid to say they're not happy. Yeah. They're afraid of retaliation. Mm. That's the feeling I get. Yeah. And so you don't say anything. If, if you don't want it to get worse. Yeah, that's one of the things I've been hearing also is the fact that, again, this is, you know, unsubstantiated, you know, but I'm not going to, but I really believe the source anyhow, is, yeah, sometimes when you do appeal certain things, there's that letter that, you know, you sometimes get where it's like a veiled threat, you know, where if you mm -hmm. pursue this, the possibility that, like, say, you can lose more, you know, or right. all of it, you know. Right. So don't rock the boat, keep your mouth shut, you know. And, um, like I say, it's been... Quite a few people, like you know, I've heard that had in fact it happened to me personally, you know. Mm -hmm. But I tried to, um, you know, we, you know, it's one of those things that need need to be dealt with, anyhow, you know. Well, Congress recently turned over another t ten or twenty billion dollars to the VA because uh -huh. the VA went to Congress and said the sky is falling, mm -hmm. and they said, okay, well, every one of these congressmen has veterans in in their district, and yeah. uh, if you presume one veteran per household, yeah. Uh, that's a good, good. That's a good chunk. So they all voted to give some more of our money yeah. to the VA to do. Uh, we're really not sure what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Uh, the choice program, I think, has been running into a little heat. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've always favored transforming our our veterans' uh, uh, health care enrollment ID card, the photo ID card, yeah. into a proof of insurance. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> making that statement to uh, Senator Hirono on, on mm -hmm. her last field uh, hearings that was here it kind of shocked her. Yeah. And but she did share with me mm -hmm. when she got her composure back that, oh, well, we have to put everybody on the contract. I mean, is everybody who provides uh, Medicare under contract? Mm -hmm. uh, if they are, we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. And Medicare seems to be working, or it would be. 17% of the population in Hawaii mm -hmm. is over 65 and presumably on Medicare, or at yeah. least eligible to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's a good chunk. Yeah. And the veterans would probably not even add 10% to that. Yeah. 120,000 more people mm -hmm. here in Hawaii, maybe we should put the veterans on Medicare. Mm -hmm. You know, you become a veteran the moment you raise your hand and you swear allegiance yeah. to the flag. That's it. Okay. I tell you, there's something else that I ran across. Uh, I'm going to read off to you. It's the um, <clears throat> the Republican, uh, excuse me, Representative Gabbard uh, introduced a uh, bipartisan bill to improve access to the quality of health for disabled veterans and the uh, Fair Access to Insurance for Retired Heroic or Heroes Act will allow medically retired veterans to choose between Medicare, Medicaid, you know, for health coverage, and um, you know. Your Sounds work? like a good idea. Yeah. And, uh, well, I like I like Tulsi Gabbard. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a she's a go getter. Yeah. Some people they they will claim that she's out for them, but then they don't like her. So <laughs> you can expect that, and you know you can smile when they say that, yeah. right? 
But I, I think she's trying to be effective, and in some cases she has been. Yeah. And she's new to the game, mm -hmm. so uh, all the may she not may not be aware of all the nuances. But she has a staff, and yeah. anybody who works in the staff for a Congress member of Congress is seasoned. Mm -hmm. They just recycle themselves yeah. through the offices. When one one of them decides to retire, the staff goes somewhere else. So yeah. that right. that that backup is always constant. Yeah. Um, it, we, I talked to a gentleman, and one of his issues was um, access to the PX. There were a lot of uh, individuals out there who do like you know 10, 11 years in the military, discharge, so uh, you know honorably for the most part, you know whatever. And uh, there's a call to open up the PX system. I know that right now there's something that may already be in place where they can purchase things online. If you're a veteran, are you aware of that? Or yes, you can. Uh -huh. This is something new. Yeah. It, it tells me that uh, the the exchange system is not uh, attracting as many customers as they would like. Yeah. Uh, uh, other private sector retailers could probably kill the exchange system by just you flash your ID card, you get a ten percent discount. Yeah. And yeah. and that that would probably be the the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I think another thing that may help is that rather than trying to invent. Uh, management style that is effective, mm -hmm. uh, outsource the management to a private sector giant. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always Walmart. They yeah. seem to know what they're doing. And the exchange can still be the exchange. It just be managed by somebody that mm -hmm. maybe knows better what they're doing about, uh, you know, providing those mm -hmm. kind of retail services yeah. to military personnel, mm -hmm. the people in, who are in the reserves or, or whatever. Yeah. So when you go to <clears throat> speaking of the PX system, the commissary. I mean, the commissary is great. I mean, you know, for uh, you know for what they provide and you right. know the pricing and everything else. Um, but the PX system seems like you can go to Walmart, as you say, or some of the other places, you know, retailers, and get a better price. You know, get a better um, price, and you pay tax, but then you pay a surcharge. So it's about even up. Yeah. Uh, you go to the exchange, they they rave about you no, know, you're not paying any taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the store, and uh, but they don't tell you about the surcharge. surcharge yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, so with this being an election year, what do you think are going to be some of the hot topics that some of the our elected officials who want to be reelected? What are some of the things you think they're going to jump on to try to you know garner that uh, military and veteran vote? Well, since only thirty percent of the people in Hawaii voted mm -hmm. for the current president in his administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that uh, it's mostly going to be focusing seven in ten on jumping on the president and administration. Yeah. So we won't hear if the president is doing anything good. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't hear much about it here. And uh, if it can be, be perceived as being bad, we'll, we'll hear about that here. But then again, we can always apply humor to yeah. both sides of this drama. Well, yeah, so I, I would say that uh, we do have... We do have illegal immigrants residing here, uh, but many of them are actually performing uh, useful services. Mm -hmm. uh, they work, mm -hmm. and they come from countries that if you don't work, you starve. Yeah. So I would say uh, that's going to be an issue, maybe not so much, uh, but it has been an issue, issue with our Department of Justice here in Hawaii. Yeah. We've got... Uh, We've got the leader of that team is going to run for Congress mm -hmm. and uh, see if he can get uh, uh, Hanabusa's vacant, vacated seat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, we talked about the military um, spending, you know, and they, mm -hmm. but it seemed like a lot of it's going towards this high tech, tech, you know, whiz bang type of stuff, you know, it's out there. I know that there's a certain, um, uh, of course, we're getting, the troops are getting, you know, some of the, gravy on that one anyhow. Right. But it seems like the majority of the money is going towards, like, say, these technological, like, te technological, you know, um, weaponry, you know, that, uh, in a way, we do help to um, eliminate a lot of the personnel anyhow. Anyhow, um, we're about ready to take a break for a minute. Um, okay. But um, anyhow, uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes with the, uh, this is Hawaii, yeah, Hawaii in uniform, and uh, we'll continue our consider our conversation with Dennis and let me get my tongue straight and I'll be fine but we'll be back in a moment. Good afternoon my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host 
of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. And welcome back to uh, Hawaii in Uniform. And again, I'm your host, Calvin. And uh, we got Dennis E. Gay, of course, with us. Um, Dennis, for those who may not know that much about you, I know that you've been around for a while, you know, and you know, you're dealing with a lot of the legislative issues, uh, not only here in Hawaii, but uh, you do visit Washington. Uh, what, again, what is the response that you're getting, and has it improved as far as the attitude with uh, a lot of our elected officials, or just business as usual, and they'll play it by ear? It's slow. Slow. But it's slow and it's measured. Mm -hmm. So when you learn not to be frustrated with the pace, because there's so many different, I mean, in Congress, there's 400 opinions, right? 100 of them in the Senate. Yeah. And uh, how many people appreciate the fact that our senators represent our state's interest in the Congress, mm -hmm. or as the House represents the districts within those states. Yeah. Sometimes there's, they're one in the same mm -hmm. uh, in the smaller states. But uh, once, once you understand that and you start working with the people who are elected to represent your interests in Congress yeah. and in the state legislature, mm -hmm. because uh, we show our face in the state legislature also. We've yeah. had some success in the past. I'm looking for some more this year. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mostly based on what the National Defense Authorization Act did uh, for the benefit of uh, divorcing military personnel. Mm -hmm. And then also so the Supreme Court finally uh, set the table straight here on uh, what is the status of a disabled veteran's uh, disability compensation. Yeah. Is it disposable income? No. Mm -hmm. uh, do you touch it in a divorce court? No, it's mm -hmm. off the table. It's not even considered. Yeah. And th but that <coughs> took the Supreme Court to overcome almost 40 years mm -hmm. of, of inequity. Yeah. It's just like when we talk about veteran, it, it, there's a lot of people still confused, you know, because you have like the federal terminology or, you know, um, definition of what a veteran is and you have the state and everything else, you know. What, what did the, what, I mean, what do you, what is the, what is your definition of a veteran? I I'll mean, use you know. the VA's definition. Okay. When you swear, allegiance to the flag, mm -hmm. when you're sworn into the military, some of your VA benefits begin at that moment in time. I'm Therefore, in my yeah. opinion, mm -hmm. you are a veteran as soon as you're sworn in. Mm -hmm. You may not be the veteran of any war yet, yeah. but and, and it may take time to get there, so uh, the VFW can't accept you. Mm -hmm. uh, the largest veterans uh, support organization, the American Legion, won't even, uh, even set limits on that, but mm -hmm. they're support organizations. They're not the government. Yeah. So in the eyes of the government, in the eyes of the Veterans Administration, you are a veteran mm -hmm. the moment you're sworn in. Yeah. Not for everything, mm -hmm. but for many things. And if something kicks in, you're a veteran. You just have to kind of wait for all of the benefits to kick in for mm -hmm. you. And, and that's when you do your service, you perform creditably, which in the, in the dictionary says honorably, mm -hmm. then uh, you're, you're a vet, you're, you're, all the services and uh, Veterans Benefits mm -hmm. Administration and uh, Veterans Health Administration, yep. they're all yours. Yeah. There's another thing that came out, uh, the, let me read this also, the Department of Veterans Affairs has suspended the application for the new Veteran Identification Card um, program 
Uh, it seems like that was launched, I think, in November or early December. I think so. And then almost immediately, like say, the system went down, you know, where they were so overwhelmed, you know. Right. But again, they, you know, that's another thing where, you know, they have these different programs that come into place, so they announce it. And then when it's kicked off, then these little glitches start happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the people, you know, the veterans are wondering, you know, what is going on here? I mm -hmm. mean, you know, you tell us you got it in place. Then when we do go to try to access it to, or utilize it, then, you know, there's some kind of technical problems that slow it down, and next thing you know, it's on temporary or even permanent hold, you know. And, uh, again, that's another thing that's frustrating to a lot of veterans because, again, you know, a number of times when we did the council meetings and some other, you know, ways we get our information, it's like they'll keep telling you sometimes where it's in the works, it's coming, you know. Mm -hmm. And we hear this, like I said, over and over again, five, ten years ago, you know, the same thing that they're saying, or if they do get a, um, something in position, then it's like once it starts working well, then they want to turn around and institute another program, and then they want, they're asking for, you know, um, a little bit of time to lose their flesh this thing out, you know, five, ten years, whatever, you know, and you're back to square one again, you know. So. Let, let me speak to that issue. Uh, mm -hmm. We all remember uh, Tammy Duckworth. Yeah. She was a, she was a helicopter pilot mm -hmm. in, the, in the Gulf, Gulf War, and she then, before she became a member of Congress, she moved into the uh, Veterans Administration building, which is about 150 yards away from the White House. So mm -hmm. the president has close association mm -hmm. with that. And in the state treasury, there's a side gate from, mm -hmm. the, from the grounds of the White House. So I guess if the president want, wanted to go visit the treasury building, he could do that without mm -hmm. showing his face in public. Yeah. But anyway, at the time I went to visit uh, Tammy, when she was at the VA, uh, she said that President Obama had gotten the uh, the VA and the and the and the, uh, the Defense Department chiefs to shake hands mm -hmm. on the idea of integrating their health care databases. Mm -hmm. Oh, it still hasn't happened. Yeah. At the at the time that this happened, the VA's healthcare database was touted to be the best. Mm -hmm. And it was most compatible with the private sector healthcare industry mm -hmm. database. And now it seems like maybe that's not true. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Pentagon pushed back and said, we're gonna keep ours, mm -hmm. even though it's not compatible with the doctors that'll be treating veterans. We're more concerned about the military personnel that we're treating, mm -hmm. but I don't know. There's yeah. something I can find out in March, and I probably will. So if I get back on the air after I get back from my adventure in Washington, yeah. D.C. this coming spring, okay. we'll know more about it. <clears throat> Good. Uh, what I'm going to try to do here is, in the past, I've you know, tried to contact or, yeah, to contact uh, some of our um, people in Washington or in places where they're making the decisions, you know, to come on and give us the direct story. Uh, we're going to make a more concerted effort here, like I said, to go ahead and get in touch with these people, to have, you know, call in and see if we can do like a call-in session or whatever it is to answer some of the questions. Mm. Or if not, you know, get in touch with uh, other organizations or entities that may be, you know, on top of the current situation, you know, there, mm. that, you know, we won't have any lag time, you know, as far as getting the information to the veterans here in the state of Hawaii, you know, and around anyhow, you know, so that's one of the things we're doing in here. So. Well, at the, uh, I haven't seen him recently, mm. but I think it's the chief of staff, the local office for, uh, uh, Senator Hirono. Yeah. He he's he seems to be very articulate. When we ask him questions, he has the answers. And if he says he's going to get back to you, he doesn't actually rely on you to forget that you asked the questions. But, yeah. And of course, that doesn't happen. Yeah. The uh, the president of, the, of all veterans council council won't won't let him off the hook. So mm -hmm. their only recourse, if they don't have an answer or they know we won't like the answer, yeah, uh, they just don't show up. Uh, this is also the case for the the VHA mm -hmm. here locally. Mm -hmm. We uh, the VBA is always always there, uh, touting their home loan guarantees, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. on the benefit side. But on the healthcare side, uh, we have to rely on the state office of veteran services to provide a lot of that inf information. And here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. that is supposed to be our advocate. Yeah, they're supposed to be the liaison between us and the federal government. Yeah. I know, there's been some questions um, that I'm, you know, a few people have approached me about it. Is the doctors, um, again, like I said, the treatment for the most part, you know, is 
top notch. I mean, you know, once you're getting in the system, it's fine, you know. But when you're being uh, evaluated for, um, you know, your claim, uh, you know, for benefit, I mean, increase or whatever it is, anyhow, it seems to be where some of the doctors don't seem to be, some of them can be downright rude, you know, when they're talking to you, you know, mm -hmm. how they handle it, you know. And again, I don't, from my personal experiences, again, I don't want to go ahead and put something because I had a bad experience with the system doesn't mean that it's totally all wrecked and everything else, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's another thing where as far as where uh, veterans, when they have issues about the way they're being treated within the system, um, who can they go to? You know, is there really going to be a resolution, you know, to the situation, you know? It's just a matter of respect, you know, and I think that uh, that's another thing that needs to be addressed when, um, you know, within the system, mm -hmm. some of the personnel, as I see a majority of them, are, um, you know, courteous, you know, conscientious, you know, trying to do what they can, you know, to what mm -hmm. they have to work with within the system. But still in all, you can have that one veteran, like I said, that has that bad experience where it has a major impact on his life, you know, and could be detrimental, you know. So we want to make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. You can't be perfect. But, and we understand that, but um, when there are things that are identified that are seem to be, you know, common instead of uncommon, then it has to be dealt with, you know, so that's what I said. Well, if my option comes true, yeah. all veterans will belong to Medicare, mm -hmm. and then you do have an option. Yeah. You don't like your doctor, <clears throat> you go find another one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like your VA doctor, you're kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have the answer to your question if you're having a beef with your VA doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm on my third VA doctor, and that's because they rotated in and out. Okay? Oh, I thought maybe you fired No, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I know that. And, and they're my backup. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, they're my reliable backup mm -hmm. to, uh, other, to being on Medicare, yeah. for example. So I, I would say... That if you can't work with your doctor, I would suggest that you try to work with the with the nurse, mm -hmm. and see what the nurse the nurse may be able to change your perspective a little bit to where you understand what the doctor is doing. Now, some of the VA doctors may not really be MDs. Yeah, uh, they could they could be a, a nurse that's got yeah. advanced training, mm -hmm. and so they're almost a doctor, right. and that's almost good enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for for some things that uh, a veteran brings to mm -hmm. the doctor's office, yeah. and you still got the backup of the full professional okay. staff. We're getting down to the wire, but Dennis, like I said, no, we're going to follow up. I know you're going to do what you can to right. go ahead and keep us on top of everything, anyhow. But uh, yeah, uh, what we're going to what I'm going to do is, like I said, make a concerted effort to get more information out there directly and get some of the people to come in to answer these questions about how you know the treatment of veterans, anyhow. Yeah. But we'll do that. You know, um, take it from there. But anyhow, I want to thank the viewers for staying tuned and tuning into the program and join us again next time on here on uh, Hawaii in Uniform. And uh, God bless, and until that time.